Welcome to Own the Chaos. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. Crash. You suck. Oh, God. Hold on. Pause. <laughs> Brad and Fat Man Zoom are here to help you own it. They were targeting Wall Street when they should have been targeting Capitol Hill. They should have been targeting DC. This is the same thing, and this is what people keep missing. Taking it to the suits, being relatable and hilarious. You bought GameStop at 400, didn't you? To the moon, baby, to the moon. Get ready to own the chaos in three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Own the Chaos. My name is Brad. That is Fat Man Zoom. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. We made it our mission to help you guys own it. And today, you look at the indexes and think, ah, pretty boring day, but it was anything but Fat Man Zoom. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to our starting five, Mysterious Gal, Nina A., Arfin, Mike Hudson, and Sean Ethier. You are starting five. And shout out to who? Jubai signed up to brought back the membership? Re-upped. Yep. There we go. Appreciate you guys uh, being a part of the Chaos Crew as well. Make sure you hit that join button if you guys want to be a part of it. Yeah, we. I mean, we talked about this offline, and I think we're probably a little bit, maybe a little bit on different pages, and it's anybody's guess. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, the market is a guess. So you try to use as much information as you have and use sort of your best best indications of it. Yeah. But, um, you know, you mentioned that you thought all the meme stocks were moving. And AMC obviously went off up nearly 100% as we speak. Um, they had their record date. A lot of people were looking at today as an important date. Um, but the question I asked was, is, is money just back in the, the tech speculative growth stocks, right? Yeah. Like, and, you know, you have growth like Apple, sure, but you have stuff where we did the 52-week low video that has just been insanely beaten down. And you look at Palantir, you look at Affirm, you yep. look at Big C, the list goes on and off. Clover, Rocket. Um, I'm not so sure I would chalk it up to just meme stocks. I don't. I think that does a disservice to what's happening in the market right now. Yep. But I wonder if the, you know, we talked about at some point, all these other stocks, reopening plays, which we're very bullish on, are going to be... Um, they continue to run hot. And so if they're at, at 52 week highs, money's got to go back into it. So that's why we've said, don't get out of tech. This is the exact reason why we said, don't get out. Just make sure you're diversified and make sure you have those things um, filled up. But yeah, I mean, it'll be, um, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the, the, so if you guys are curious as to what's being chatted about the most on like wall street bets, for example, we always go to swaggystocks.com. It's a free website. If you guys just want to check it out and see what's going on, AMC obviously is on there. Number one, no surprise there. And the thing is just off like a rocket. Uh, it's up, up, as, up over a hundred percent today. Uh, there's Blackberry, which also went nuts today. Uh, you have sundial, which is up rockets up. Uh, Clover, which we're pretty pumped about, went yeah. went went a little crazy today too. A lot of them, um, even Neo went went up today. So there's been some ones that that are certainly on the Wall Street bets uh, mentions. Fubo also went crazy. I just saw that here too. Fubo went nuts. So there's there's How been much a, is Fubo up? Fubo uh, went up. I yeah, because like I group GME, AMC, and BlackBerry together. Yeah, Fubo's up seventeen percent. Yeah, I, I booked those three together, and then I think everything else is sort of like, I feel like those move together. If one moves, those those other two move. You don't think Rocket had any correlation to the move in AMC? Um, I don't, I'm not saying it didn't, but like when GMEs moved up, AMCs always moved up with it. Is yeah. that fair to say? Yeah. For the most part, GME moves up. You see, you see uh, AMC moving up, and BlackBerry is the same thing to a lesser extent. Nokia, yeah, um, and yeah, I th Nokia could probably be thrown into that, but Rocket hasn't followed that same trend. So one, di like historically, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Rocket have a true parallel as GameStop, AMC, those two particular, and BlackBerry um, have moved together. Yeah, could it be sure? But these are all. I mean. Let's not discount the fact that those are different. Rocket is a very different stock than AMC. Oh, yeah, 100%. And it's needed to go up. So the reasoning, you know, like we talk about beta and Rocket hasn't followed the market. So the fact that it's not following it today is actually no, like it's not a surprise. Yeah. So I think that's the other thing to consider is like 
the beta on rockets, I would imagine higher. Uh, if I had to guess, it had to be a 1.5 or higher than that. And so it could have an outsized move of the market. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, could it be? But like, you know, there's also some stocks on that list that are not up. Yeah. Um, but I think rockets just needed to move. And if this was the thing that moved it, sure. But, um, but yeah, AMC's move. Uh, people had an eye on it. I don't want to say it's expected because it's a hundred percent move. So yeah. I don't think that was necessarily expected. But it's safe to say that's not a surprise. If you'd have told me AMC would have moved hundred percent, it's just stu- it moves stupid like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. It's it's pretty crazy uh, to see how this has gone up. <laughs> some of the, some of the comments I've gotten over the last two weeks has been interesting too. But um, yeah, it's not a surprise. My only thing is that I would say that if you are in some of these st- some of this stuff, and if you're not at least taking something off the table or at least playing with house money, then then maybe that should be a con- strong consideration. At least if it were me, that's what I'd be doing. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you're in Clover. Yeah. Um, you're in. Uh, oh, we won't put Airbnb in there. Uh, you're in Drive Shack. I'm in Drive. But Shack. you just got in. So those are, those are my two like most speculative plays. Would be. Uh, so then, if you're saying yeah. that, so Clover. Would you be taking some off the table? Uh, I'm only up 20% on Clover. Yeah. I'd like to be up a little bit more before I started playing with some house money on that. Yeah. 25% somewhere around there. Is is where you're up or where you'd like to be? I'm up 25 Yeah. I'm like, I would like to, I bought Clover at 665 with the intention of it being a $20 stock. Yeah. If it gets to $12, then I probably will end up selling half. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have no, like my spec, I, I put Zoom Snack is palantir for today yeah and i got that sub 20 we've been talking about that for a while (laughs) shout out to the watch list but palantir it seems like every day breaks a new dollar and so yesterday was 23 trying to break clearly broke 24 today and so i was saying like it just has so much more room to run now amc different story like not as far as a room to run but just a different story as far as like it's at and it's at 52 week highs yeah palantir is not anywhere near that no. so i'm not yet ready to start trimming palantir i want that thing to get to 30 before i even consider it but i'm already 25 percent up on that but a lot of good things um my net and my overall account has been positive but my net account value went positive which is really great yeah. um because if clover continues to run which i hope it will um, and I, I expect it to, to maybe tomorrow will be some profit taking, but I still can t- expect it to move. Um, I mean, that's just going to mean good things for the account, the old public account. Yeah. I mean, my, the public account for our chaos crew members, uh, in mine in particular hit record highs, uh, today. Uh, and it w- was not because I was in, um, <laughs> in amc i was actually in the oil plays so if you guys uh that's that was kind of what 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 led the markets if you guys are watching the overall markets in general um i'm not sure uh what the reasoning was but the overall market was pretty flat but what ended up leading most of it was the energy sector we've kind of been talking about that as well and um you know i wanted to kind of segue this into inviting you guys to check out the chaos crew so if you guys um are a part of the crew already you know that we talked about oih this morning in this morning's watch mm-hmm. list i actually happened to mention this and i wanted you guys to kind of look at this chart so i'm going to pull up the oih chart real quick so if you guys don't know about oih um it is the oil services etf so it covers things like halliburton and um and and the like so you look at something like this. I'm going to pull it up here. We'll look at the daily chart. You can see this wonderful breakout that happened today. Well, if you guys were in the chaos crew, you would have been able to pay attention to that because I had mentioned that the resistance had been sitting at here at $230 a share. And with the price of oil climbing still, this should be, keyword being should, a huge breakout for, point for OIH. The, the door has shut on this before at 230 but I think there, if there was ever a time for it to bust through it, now is the time. Any pullbacks to 205 look like a good opportunity. And what do you know at Fat Man Zoom? Blasted right through that two hundred thirty dollars yeah, mark. It's good. So uh, oil is still very much in play here too. I really like uh, the sector, which is why I got the OIH ETF. But I'm also in Marathon Oil, which also had a really great day too. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely still other opportunities out there. I mean, it's it's been a good day overall. I think for the crew as a whole, seemed to do well. Um, Kevin Huerta Ponce said, Rocket won't move for a long time. Too many cash offers, not enough loans being accepted. That's an interesting statement you make. I'd be interested to hear you back that with some sort of data because I've never 
heard that. Like I haven't heard like this overabundance of cash offers. Yeah. They've already kind of existed, but um, we've talked about the supply issue, uh, but that's an interesting point, especially on today. It's having, to it's, that. having its biggest day since the uh, Wall Street bets short squeeze. Yeah. On it, which is interesting. Yeah. So um, we'll see what happens. Not saying you're wrong. Just an interesting take I haven't heard before. Um, and I haven't seen that data. Um, Neo's doing much better. That's another meme stock. Didn't really move today. Uh, had a nice move yesterday. Was that Neo? Yeah, Neo. Yeah. Um, doing much better finally. Is that back in the green? No, no it's, it's, it's actually down going to an half percent today. Um, but yeah, they had some delivery growth. But um, you know what is up? Nikola is up like 13%. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Like some of these weird, crazy ones that went nuts in 2020 have kind of like resurfaced. Yeah, today it's up 17 and a quarter. <laughs> Man, if there was ever a, a, an opportunity to short a stock, I feel like it's been a long time since I've shorted anything. Would you short? I would probably shorten Nikola. This is going to get people fired up. I know. Which I would you? It's fine. Well, you didn't hear what I asked. Oh, I thought you were talking about Nikola. The, the question I'm going to ask you is about to fire people up. Which, if you could only short one stock right now, would it be Nikola or AMC? Ooh, uh, probably Nikola. Only because I have no idea what the hell is going to go on with AMC. Yeah, I really don't. <laughs> it could go. It could go to 400 like GameStop did. I will say that like. It's impressive to see AMC up this much. The market cap is now higher than GameStop is. Yeah. Just you know, um, I watched a couple of videos on AMC today. One, it's kind of sad that everybody... It just frustrates me. You know I talked to you about this offline. Yeah. I just hate regurgitating information and saying the same shit. Uh, see you later again. And so, you know, the one thing that I'm hearing about AMC is like the... Every video starts out the same. AMC, meme stock retail versus institution and then they do this thing where they talk about how people are saying it gets a hundred thousand or like a half a million or something and then they do this and just watch like any amc video you watch on youtube they're gonna say can it get to a hundred thousand and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna essentially say if it gets to a hundred thousand it'll be this much, which might be like $45 trillion. And then they'll say, then they'll pull up the GDP and they'll say it's X times bigger than the GDP. Every video does it. And they saw the same chart. And I'm like, like, you guys can't come up with some new original creative shit. Like what is it? It's just so, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I don't, I, 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 I applaud the, the play. I mean, at this point, you, 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 there's no fundamental analysis that you can give. There's no, there's nothing else. The thing that, that strikes me is that the people that argue that it should keep going up is because they're continuing to try to just stick it to the man, which I, I get. Like, I'm all about, you know, trying to stick it to somebody who's been manipulating a stock, especially on the short side of things and, and essentially trying to ruin a company. But when you look at it this way, at the way that it is now, and people are still trying to buy this up, it's just, it's just pretty wild when the, the basis of you buying something is for a quote unquote cause and not because you're actually looking at the company as a whole. I was telling Don Fran, it was Don Fran show, I was like, man, so the days like today are days where, where I wish I just didn't know better because if yeah. I didn't know better, I would have bought AMC and I've been fine. <laughs> but most times when you look at situations like this, it never ends well. And so that's, that's, you know, I just go with what I know and, and that's, that's how, that's how I ended up playing it. So just kind of watching from the sidelines. Well, I don't want to say this is the best example because GameStop is a better example than, than this, but yeah, one thing you would look at is, we talk about where the attention lies in the market. Look at Nikola. We just talked about Nikola. Yeah. If you look at it, we were dealing with the same stuff last year <laughs> about Nikola. And yeah, nobody yeah. would be willing to concede that this stock could go down. And we were idiots for even thinking it. When I was at $90. <laughs> and the reality is, and like you might have said, you would short it or it's a cheesecloth condom stock pick of the week. And, like, and then it would go up. But nobody's talking about Nikola. Yeah. And nobody would venture to say that, like, I would hope nobody would venture to say that like, this is a good investment. And so, not saying you can't, but, like, the attention's move from Nikola. Yeah. The attention will move from AMC. Yeah, there'll be a big cloud of cash that just goes into the next thing. And it'll, yeah, whether, it, and, and it's the same with Doge. It, it always is. And so, like, here's the problem. I was watching a video. 
<laughs> on AMC. <laughs> and I'm just interested in what people are saying. No interest in getting it. I have no, let me be clear. You can play the hype. I've said you can play the hype. I think it's cool to play the hype. I wouldn't try to short it. Like, I'm not trying to bet against anybody. No. But there is a comment. So, like, if you want to play the hype, cool. But if you're trying to tell me this is a legitimate stock, like, I don't know what the bullish case is outside of you hope that the meme crowd is going to push it. Fine. Run with it. Yeah. But when I'm watching this video and he's talking about he has like his entire portfolio is AMC. Well, let me back this up. The intro of the video talked about um, all these millionaires that were made off of GameStop. Where? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying there aren't. Yeah. I'm not saying there aren't. But I would venture to guess there's more people who lost their ass than did it. Yeah. Because the people that were in it big were diamond hands. There were a bunch, bunch of people that made good money on it, but those weren't the people that were like, let's ride this thing to the moon. And so I got to imagine there's more collateral, collateral damage than that. So until I see statistics about there were X amount of millionaires, at one time their account may, be, may have been in a million, but even um, Roaring Kitty at yeah. GameStop, I don't believe Roaring Kitty ever sold. No, he did not. So like, was that smart? I don't know. So yeah, yeah. That, I feel like more people were in Roaring Kitty's position, which he's green. So I'm, I'm sure he's green. But my point is, like, what he was up and the articles written about him doesn't mean that he closed out of that position. And I think the similar story is going to be from AMC. I don't see five years from now somebody riding around my neighborhood with a red Corvette saying, I got rich off of AMC. It, it happens, but it's very, very rare. It's more yeah. likely that you're going to win the lottery. It's interesting that you bring up the diamond hands part of it because if you look at, um, you know, people that have been holding this for a long time, uh, we have folks in our chaos group have been holding it since $4. I actually, I am on record saying that I, I liked AMC at four sixty five. Yeah. Uh, but um, you look at the folks that have been holding this time, and those are the ones that are they're winning out big. So a lot of the folks that you're seeing getting AMC now and in recent days, they're the ones trying to make the quick money. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it if you, as long as you make it and you don't, you know, just as long as you're not a hodler now. Yeah. You look at Bitcoin, the 10 biggest yeah. days in Bitcoin, um, you, if you uh, hadn't, if you weren't a part of those days, you would be red on Bitcoin. Wow. I didn't um, know that. Yeah. That's so, uh, and so I think that you just look at something like that and it, it compared to something like AMC and it's probably going to play out in a similar, similar way. If you weren't holding during the, the biggest days at AMC, pretty good chance you're probably going to end up being red. Yeah. And, and let me be clear. My issue is not with people buying it. I have no issue with anybody. Buying not at all. It. Not at all. My issue is with people. I, I, I it's just, I just look at, listen to people on YouTube and like, literally you're just trying to convince thing to, to convince people to buy it with legitimately no yeah. argument. Like just have an exit strategy. That's it. Yep. No matter what it is. Yeah. Even if it's like, I'm going to put a thousand dollars into AMC and I'm just going to let it roll. Manage the risk. If that's your strategy, fine. Yeah. Um, so listen, we get some right. We get some wrong. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. Um, that's that's where my beef is, not with anybody that's buying it. I think I've said it. It was cool to buy it if you want to do a technical play, an asymmetrical tr uh, trade. Now, along the lines of speculative and stocks that we potentially are bullish on, um, people are talking about in the comments that Clover's at a new high of the day. Did it break nine yet? Did it really? No shit. Let no, me see. It's at high of the day. I don't know if it broke nine. Yeah, it did break the high of the day. It's at 882 right now. It's up 14%. So it didn't break nine yet? Uh, does not look like it. No, it's okay. at the high of the day right now. Okay, cool. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about today is spec specs. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about on our channel, what do we want to do? We want to, we could talk about the same old shit that everybody's talking about, or we can try to be ahead of the game a little bit. We did that with the reopening plays. We were talking about that feels like in the fall. I know. Get into reopening plays, rotation. Um, we talked about travel industry. Get in it before everybody starts talking about it. To a lesser extent, we talked about cruise liners. And so we don't get them all right. I'm not, this isn't to pat us on the back. It's just to make a point that we're trying to look for things that are the next things people are talking about. And yeah. Brad, I think I know what that is. I think 
that in the coming months you're going to hear the resurgence of SPAC. I think you're going to you're going to think you're going to see that title on the CNBCs, the Yahoo Finances, the Talking Heads, um, and I think you're going to see the YouTube channels return of the SPAC. <laughs> Cut to the video, and the intro has Mark Morrison's Return of the Mac. I can already see it now. And then, like, <laughs> your face is right there. Yeah, so, so <laughs> SPAC, SPAC's been beaten down. We've talked about it. Clover was a SPAC. Um, we've talked about the Chamath SPACs beaten down. But SPACs is over, overall have been largely beaten down. And I think the question becomes, are SPACs dead and along those same lines, will they come back? And you have to decide which one. Are yeah. they dead or will they come back? And that's kind of my question to you. We know there's a lot of shitty SPACs and there's a ton out there. I think there's fear around regulation and crackdowns on SPACs. Um, I don't think they go away. I do think regulation increases, but short term, that sucks. Long term, I think that's a better thing. Yeah. Um, but what what say you as far as that? Do you think SPAC comes back? SPACs come back because last year this time, anything that had SPAC on it would just shoot up yeah. at any given time. I think that I think that the hysteria surrounding around SPACs is never coming back. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, somewhere a meeting of the middle. Whereas right now, nobody wants anything to do with them. Yeah. And, you know, three, four months ago, everybody wanted something to do with them. And I, so I think that there's going to be something in the middle. And I think it's going to come down to what companies are actually going to merge into a SPAC that are worth a shit. Yeah. It's the, the, the ones that uh, celebrities are getting into that have no real business yeah. model, all that good stuff. I think those are going to get weeded out and they already have been. And the ones that are going to really shine are the ones that we, we've talked about on this channel before. I think Clover's still very much in that conversation. We've talked about SoFi, which went crazy today too. Um, just some some really good ones that actually have good business models, good, good business models, and are good companies. I think will become good st stocks, despite whether or not they come in as a SPAC or an IPO or what have you, direct yeah, listing. Yeah. So I want to delineate um, sort of how we define that. But before that, I'll say I am incredibly bullish on SPACs, and I think that. I mentioned this last year. I think there will become a point where we will no longer get an opportunity for SPACs, just like we no longer got an opportunity for IPOs. Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the challenging thing with IPOs is, like, the institutions win. I believe that there'll be a clear delineation between good SPACs and shitty SPACs, and I think that'll be through regulations. And I think what will end up happening is you'll have to get a SPAC before the merger partner in, is announced. Now you can get a, a SPAC when the merger partner is announced and get at that $10 key level, and it's just sitting there where before a run. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think that's going to stay, and it's a very unpopular opinion I have, but I have strong conviction in this because it's too straightforward not to change. And so I believe this week is a critical turning point. I think a couple things may happen, and this is clear speculation on my part. Um, the reason why I feel confident, SoFi, SoFi consummated their a reverse merger yesterday, so they switched over to ticker yesterday. Yep. That was IPOE. Um, that's doing really well. Bark did the same thing today. Bark is doing extremely well. B-A-R-K, that was STIC. We've been on that. Um, been on that for a while. We've been on that for a while, and that's done really well. And we haven't seen this move in a minute from SPACs in the same way. And so my thing that's running through my mind is, okay, is this it? Like, are people starting to feel okay with it now? And so I think that's the first step. The next step, I think, is um, I think we're going to see some more SPACs launching. Um, we know that Chamath has three that he's filed for. I yeah. think we're going to hear announcements on that. His IPOD, IPOF, I think he, I don't want to say he leads it, but he's a major catalyst in the SPAC market. And if if the market's in favor of him, SPAC should hopefully move in the same direction. Um, I'm extremely bullish on it. And I think that we're going to get to a point where we've got to create some parameters on what we look for in a SPAC. So I have some ideas, but what would you look for as far as, if you don't know who the partner yet is for a reverse merger for a SPAC, but you're thinking about getting in one. I think it comes down to reputation and reputation of what? Of of the um of the 
board members that are involved with the spec, like Chamath, for Leadership. example. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with something like a Chamath or, or even something like a Churchill Capital, CCIV, for example. Yeah. That's doing well today. Lucid Motors is coming into them. Uh, companies that go, don't go after just anything, that are going to go after the solid companies. Um, PACX, you brought that one up. I, I think that that's going to be a good one too. But so looking at these particular companies and what they've done in the past, I think could lead to what they may do in the future. Obviously, it's never a guarantee, but that's, yeah. that's a, I think, in my opinion, a really good starting point is the leadership that's involved in these specs. Yeah, Pershing Capital is another one that gets brought up as a leader in that. Yep. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, Bill Ackman, but... Yeah, so so shout out. So um, you did mention PACX. I want to bring that up because that's been on the watches. I actually hold that as a long-term play. Yeah. They just announced a reverse merger partner last week, which was Acorns. Yeah. And it hasn't moved yet, but that merger will happen in the coming months. And I expect that to do really well. Um, but I do think you have to start with leadership, track record of leadership. And you can do due diligence in that. And so we've talked about IPOF. I mean, Chamath, for, for anything knock that people have on him, the one positive I'll say is he has a great leadership team. And he's very intentional on who he brings in yeah. uh, to his SPACs. But looking at leadership, looking at um, the investment in the SPACs, so how much funding, fun, yeah, funding. Um, that's going to be important. And what split, if you can get the information on how much of a kickback the original shell company SPAC is going to get, yeah. right? Like that's going to be important as well because, you know, it's usually in the form of shares, um, and how much of that goes to the original SPAC owner. But you can look at all those, but it never hurts to look at leadership and look at track record because a SPAC doesn't need to be a long-term play. You can sort of delineate the timeline on when those moves are yeah. going to happen. And that's why I'm saying something like PACX, Acorns gets announced, it stays at that $10 mark. I imagine at the, at the reverse merger vote, it's going to move. But just like STIC, Last Thursday, STIC was at like ten dollars. Yeah, and then it went up ten percent on Friday. It's moved thirty percent in three trading days. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't have an opportunity. Right. What's it's, up, Rajiv? It's pretty crazy. Is Clover still moving? Yeah, Clover is. Uh, it was. Oh, okay. uh, it was moving. It's at yeah. eight seventy seven right now. But. So yeah, so I I, I think that SPAC. It, Make sure you're intentional with it, but I think there's huge opportunities in SPAC, and I think the story is, it's only the beginning of the story for SPAC, especially because IPOs are shitty for, for retail investors, yeah. and I think that's going to be where things start moving into. Um, don't sleep on SPAC. That's the thesis for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that, um, like, it, it's, it's, it's like we've been saying in the overall market that it's a stock picker's market, mm -hmm. and you can make some serious cash if you know what to be in. Yeah. Um, and so I think that it, the same narrative kind of follows along with this. is like you just have to know what you're looking for and what you want to be in because I think um, that's going to separate you from – that's going to separate the winners from the losers. It's not that you can just throw a dart at any one of these SPACs and win. you got to know what you're looking for. Yeah. Rudy Brown says, Acorn is an awesome app. Love that. Easy investing. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an easy entrance entry into people. Like, the model's really cool. Um, obviously, it has good backers behind it. Thanks, Jeff Panika. Appreciate you backing me. He agrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it rains to be seen. Guys, we got more takes like that. Yeah. Who's talking about the return of this back, Brad? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Own the chaos. Nobody. I was actually, like... On the fence until we started chatting about a little bit more about talking about today, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. So we'll see. Keep an eye on Bark. We still feel really good about that. Um, should do really well. God, how long have we been talking about that stock? SDIC? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Forever. Like <laughs> since January, at least. Yeah. I, I, I love the company. Yep. Um, some, some earnings today. We got C3AI, Splunk, Cloudera couple other ones i don't know if anybody was interested in those but those are the ones that i thought was most notable to me so we can take a look at those if you guys would like to but overall the markets are doing pretty good um let's go ahead and just i'll move over by the way let me know how you guys like the ticker as well still working on that but i would love to be able to kind of get some real-time news and stuff like that and ticker so you guys can see that but i'm looking at the markets overall and um looks pretty good 
Markets actually ended up turning green. Nasdaq turned turned green after it was down red uh, before the stream started. Dow was Dow's up as well, but everything's kind of flat on the day. Um, and energy ended up leading the uh, leading the charge this afternoon or this the whole day really. But uh, AMC ended up closing at uh, sixty five. It closed up one hundred percent today. Damn, it's pretty wild. <laughs> pretty wild stuff. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We'll check out those three, but we got ChargePoint and Lulu tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll be live for those. Uh, ChargePoint, Lulu, uh, isn't it uh, DocuSign tomorrow as well? Yeah, DocuSign's tomorrow. Yeah, DocuSign uh, will be. Yeah, good. we do deserve more likes, guys. Make sure you're hitting that like button. <laughs> we got if you don't like it. <laughs> There's 104 of you guys in here. We appreciate you uh, allowing us to be a part of your afternoon. But yeah, if we could get those likes up, that would be awesome. We only got about 30 of them. Yeah, so AMC, just a monster move. Only got halted once today. I was actually kind of surprised that it was just one time. Hmm. I mean, you know what I'm also surprised about? What's that? Robin Hood did not interfere with AMC today. <laughs> I saw it's halted. I'm like, what is... It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Um, Rahiv, Rajiv got into OIH. Yeah, OIH did really well. I saw somebody asking about Marathon Oil. Marathon, um, I don't really necessarily have a price target on it, but I do think it goes higher from here. It hit 52-week highs at $14, closed the day at $13.91, um, still just trucking along. It looks great. The, the chart looks awesome. No real reason to, to believe what, that this is going to continue to go down, still maintaining its trend. Uh, after yesterday's gap up, the OPEC news that came through on oil was pretty good too, so that's why it's been moving so, so, so good. Um, Feel pretty good about it, just overall oil industry in, in, in general. Um, did you hear the news on Tesla or Elon? Yes. Uh, about his tweets that he yeah. should not have tweeted? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's anything there, or are you not worried about it? I actually uh, retweeted that last night when it came out, and I thought it was a big old nothing burger. Really? There's two tweets that came out, and they were like way back last yeah. year. I think one was 2019, one was 2020. Yeah, right? like what are we what are we bitching about at this point? Would, if it was something that ha- came out yesterday and like impacted the stock significantly because he said something he wasn't supposed to say, then fine. But there's got to be a statute of limitations on this BS. Well, I'm I was wondering what the timeline is for investigations because we know government moves slow. Yeah, and um, and it takes time. So I was I was like surprised too because it was so long ago. But I was just wondering like. Does it just take that long for them to have an inquiry? Because you think about it, they're not going to get a tweet to, on their desk for some time, and then they have to decide if they want to investigate. And the issue is not the tweet. The issue is kind of the tweet, but the bigger issue is, as part of his SEC settlement, one, he had to step down as chairman, but two, I guess all of his tweets needed to be reviewed, and those weren't reviewed, and that was like the yes. bigger issue. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So uh, if you guys don't know the story, so... Um, Elon Musk got into trouble with this, and this is actually kind of ties into my point, um, because he uh, put out uh, a tweet basically that he was so frustrated with short short sellers that he was just going to take the company private again, which like cratered the stock. And then that's when the SEC stepped in, and that was relatively quick. And so, you know, if it was that important to the SEC, I feel as if they would have hopped on this a lot quicker, but... um, because of all that, he basically, like you had mentioned, had to step down as chairman, uh, and then all of it, basically his Twitter account got babysat. Um, but I guess somehow these two got missed. I just don't see how this is really anything of significance. The only thing I could see this impacting uh, is his ability to be able to be voted back in as chairman, which I think he's eligible for within the next two years, I want to say, somewhere okay. around there. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't I don't think that it's really anything that should impact the stock. Um directly i just think it's kind of silly that it's even news so splunk's numbers did come out thanks arfin they missed on earnings beat on revenue earnings per share the estimates were a loss of 70 cents they actually came in a loss of 91 cents and sales they beat estimates were 491 million came in at 502 million yeah looking at the stock right now and after hours trading it's down 1.45 percent uh crazy spike uh, as soon as the earnings were released, all the way down to 118. But right now it's trading around uh, 122.89. So we'll see where that lands. But those didn't look too bad. Those didn't look too bad at all. 
C3 AI says uh, Savvy Money Show. Yeah, C3 AI um, is an interesting one, too, as Splunk just went green after hours here. <laughs> Maybe Snook. Give, <laughs> Snook, I think that's your... That's give it a it. refresh, Snook. <laughs> uh, AI right now is actually red after hours, too. Looks like perhaps maybe those uh, earnings came through, but no immediate reaction here in after hours trading just yet. Doesn't look like we're seeing the kind of volume we normally do. God, Palantir is beautiful. $24. We were screaming buy this thing at 16. <laughs> I know. Wild. Uh Kathy yes. Kathy got a good dollar cost average. She sure did. Uh Splunk is still rolling here. It's actually looking pretty good after hours. Ooh. Ooh. It is in the cloud space. Oh man, look at this thing. It's now up 2% after hours. Ooh. It's getting some getting some buys in here. Yeah, so the cloud computing space. I had somebody like give me some grief about Dropbox because I didn't think I didn't like Dropbox as a buy. It wasn't that I didn't like Dropbox um, or some of the other ones, but there are just so many other better cloud based companies out there that I'd rather be putting my money into. One of them is just not Dropbox. <laughs> uh, Daniel Camarena live from the FedEx warehouse. What's up, man? Enjoying my portfolio being in the green. That's what's up. Uh, King D's been in pound here since 17. Hell yeah, man. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah, data data analytics. Splunk's in data data mining, data analytics. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it seems silly now, below 20, but at the time. I oh, know. <laughs> that was not an easy well, pound here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17 is awesome, though. You'll be looking good. Daniel Camarena says he's all in on Dry Shack, which we didn't talk about today, but it had another great day. Steady Eddie, baby. Gift that keeps on giving. Lots of questions being raised as to why I would buy this at 321. But, man, it went all the way up to 334. Not a wild move, but we don't expect wild moves out of Dry Shack. I actually saw, uh, read back through the um, uh, the earnings, Fat Man Zoom, and I didn't catch this the first time around, but over 100 uh, calls in, for corporate meetings at, at Dry Shack locations per day. Oh, that's coming crazy. in. It's pretty wild. Pretty the well putteries are going to be really exciting. I mean, really, the the, yeah. the response to the putteries because it's it's different. It's golf, but really, who they're targeting is totally different. Yeah. And so when we see those first initial locations come out, we got to fly to one. Like we got to fly to an open. I'm down. There's one in Raleigh, right? No, there's a drive shack, but not a puttery. Oh, oh, oh. They haven't opened the puttery concept. I'm saying we got to get to the first puttery, which is either Dallas or Charlotte. I don't know which one's opening first. Okay. I'm down for either. I want to see how they do. Let's do it. Um, because they have greater profitability to the putteries. Yeah. They're they're less capitally intensive and their break even's a lot quicker. So I think it's like two and a half years where their bigger units like Rally are yeah. I think five years to break even. That's uh social arb trading at its finest. Yeah, absolutely. Go down I mean, that's how we found it. Yeah. Uh, over a year ago. Right. It was we were at Drive Shack, and there was three-hour freaking waits yeah. nonstop. Yep. Um, I mean, I had a date cancel on me because the wait was too long. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it was a little bit of a rough patch. <laughs> That'll be... Uh, she was like... She was like... <laughs> She was like texting me. All right. I was... Uh, it's just a side story. <laughs> you want more personal stories, baby? Here you go. I'm already in Drive Shack. Yeah. I'm in the lobby. She's driving around the lot and it's packed. And she's like, ah, I just can't wait for a spot. I'm leaving. <laughs> Man, did I want to throw the phone? <laughs> I was like, really? Like, you won't even come in to say? And she left. We reconciled, though. Shout out. You know who you are. <laughs> I mean, Needless to say, it didn't didn't really work out. <laughs> it didn't end well. The ending still. The end result was still oh, the same. Beautiful friendship. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's a probably. She did apologize though. I well, won't say for yeah. the record. Well, that's good. <laughs> Self awareness. It's a beautiful um, thing. Oscar, no, we don't have family in Raleigh. We have a lot of friends in Raleigh. Yeah, I got. A, I got, and not mutual friends either. Like, I have friends in Raleigh, too, that oh, yeah, yeah. not mutual friends. So it's just coincidence that it ended up being that way. Um, 
So, just checking on some of the comments. It says, when you guys predict Drive Shack to five dollars, are the new locations being built priced into that? Yes, uh, I, I believe yes, so. What? That the five five dollar per, uh, price prediction that we're that we put in, at least for me, I guess I shouldn't speak for you, but uh, includes the the new locations going in. So we think it's going to five dollars because of the new location. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree. I, I think. Yes, for the next three. I think that what's bigger and more exciting about Drive Shack and why it could even get above 10, I mean, long term, yeah. um, is the growth is crazy. I mean, they're trying to have, I wish I had this off the top of my head, but I think it's 10 putteries by next year. Yeah. And they're opening more of their mega sites as well. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see this comment by Jessica? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, Jessica. You should be ashamed of yourself. Like it's I said, all right. it's hey, not all right. It is. You she, should be ashamed of yourself. Because she has self-awareness is what I said. <laughs> At least she recognizes. Selfish. That's exactly what it is. Selfish. <laughs> um, Michael Hanna. I see Splunk turning red. Is the earnings out yet? Yeah, Michael. They missed on earnings per share, and they... A beat on uh, revenue. Beat on revenue. Yeah. They came in at a loss of 91 cents. I believe uh, like 70 or something was. Loss of 70 was the initial estimates. Oscar, I'm going to take you up on that. Next time in Raleigh, we'll meet up. Um, yeah, so it is turning down here. Actually, it spiked all the way to 127.53 and is turning turning down a little bit. Um, but e- either way, like I think um, those numbers are pretty good. I like Splunk. I think it's a good a good company. They, they, got, they got it rough. Well, a lot of these stocks ended up coming down, but I think this is probably got some promise to it. If you guys are looking for some speculative plays, this is probably a good one to get into. Um, all right, I have a selfish question. Okay. I was going to wait till tomorrow, but I'll ask you now. Would you hold charge point over earnings tomorrow? Oh, man. And I'm not well, I guess it depends. I was going to say, yeah. We have, need some more context because, like, how much of it do you have? How much of it takes up? How much of it of your portfolio does it take up? So I'm in, um, let's just say I'm in half position size. As far as my portfolio, it's like 7%. Then yes, I would say it's probably worth holding over, over earnings. Because even if it goes, if it doesn't go your way, and you only have half your position size, yeah, you can always grab some more. Unless there's something catastrophic in those earnings, which yeah. I don't expect there to be. Yeah, um, I think that... I think you're perfectly fine holding over earnings. I mean, I just picked it up to play the run. It was one of the uh, one of our Stockwatch Sunday favorites. Shout out Stockwatch Sunday. Shout out. PM Eastern. Um, I'm up 8%. I may say, depending on what, if tomorrow's a big day, I may just trim, or I may sell it just for the hell of it. Yeah. Sell of it, sell it just for the hell of it. Mm-mm-mm, for the smell of it. You know what song that is? Yes. What song? Uh, I don't remember the name, but it's in my head. I can literally sing it right now. You want my bod? Here's a hot rod. <laughs> what do you got? Come on, somebody knows this song. It, uh, isn't it Lottie Dottie? We like to party. Nope. Can what is the name of that? What is the name of that song? Do you know who sings it? Is it Snoop Dogg? No, it's actually it's actually women. Oh, is, oh, oh, um, shit. No, I'm I'm not gonna get it. I think the crew's going to come through. For I'm usually you. pretty good at picking at, at naming songs. I think Jessica. Oh wait, wait, wait! It's Salt and Pepper. It's, yeah, it's uh, Salt and Pepper. Um, well, you already Salt and Lepo Lepa. <laughs> it's Salt and Pepper. Hold on, I'm not even look. I'm not looking at the chat. They are. Uh, you didn't see the chat. No, you didn't see the chat. No, I'm not looking at it right now. I, look, go back and watch the tape. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it's. It's. Uh, what a man. It is. Okay. <laughs> you know why I'm like I'm like embarrassed to not know that that's because like I always like with Susan's phone I tell her that that song was named named after me. Why? Because because it is. Oh, like you're the guy in it. Because I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Even though even though I was like five years old when that song came out. <laughs> um. <laughs> That might be my song for level three next week. What a man. <laughs> it should be. That's a good ass song. It is a that good never song. gets old. Yeah. Krispy Kreme is going public. Hell yeah. We might have to get some donuts to celebrate. Buy. That's a clear buy. 
Um, as we wind down, yeah, tonight's going to be a fun night. Yeah, it's Wednesday, folks, so we, you know it's, it's man meal night. Go follow us on IG at Own the Chaos. We got some fun stuff. Should I show them? Should I show them? Yeah. All right. Is this Chris watches? Yeah. Oh no no no. no, 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 no okay. We got one. Of, we got two of our boys had birthdays yesterday. Yeah, so to celebrate. Man-Meal. So this is Man Meal Thirty Two. Thirty two Man Meal dinners in a row. Yep. In honor of Magic Johnson. So we name every Man Meal based on the number thirty two Magic Johnson. Whatever athlete we want to choose. This is a Man Meal shirt. I gotta tell this story, so check us out. So let's look at the back. <laughs> thirty two is Shaq too, right? Uh thirty two is Shaq on the Magic, not yeah, on the Lakers. Yeah, okay. So we got the Lakers purple. And a funny story. So every man meal, I video him in the middle of eating. Yes. And so I I, I took a snapshot of that. <laughs> so he hasn't seen this yet. You guys see that? <laughs> yeah, boy. That's one of the man meals. So it's in his face. <laughs> this is comfortable. Did you feel it? It, it is comfortable. And the and the like the the graf- I didn't want a shitty shirt. The graphic on it was is, is is incredible. This is very well done. It's gonna be good. Bowling night. It's kind of like bowling night. We just we just eat dinner instead. Yeah, we just eat dinner, give presentations and stuff like that. <laughs> and Brad still isn't allowed in the group chat, Mister Green Bubbles. <laughs> I sure am not. I sure am not. I sure am not. Even I though, check in every once in a while to see if he's still a green bubble. I talk I talk to everybody outside of the, the group chat, though. So they all have my green bubble. <laughs> um, I snooch, I can't change it. C3 did come out, Abel. C3, um, actually, no, I'm sorry. So Peter. I did C3 come out? You said numbers, but I didn't see them anywhere. SoFi does look great. Um, yeah, I got nothing as far as uh, the numbers that have come out yet, but... Right now, it's down 1.5%, so I got no numbers just yet. I never got into AAP. It never filled my order, Arfin. Charge point and AAP was what I was looking at. Uh, I got charge point, didn't get AAP. Yeah. I don't think it did anything today, though. It didn't. I, I have AutoZone, and I'm, like, on the fence about keeping it because it just I've had it for a week, and it's literally fluctuated a couple of cents. I mean, do you need cash in your account? Or no, but I mean, I'm just bored. Yeah. I get like that sometimes. Yeah. I don't usually have that problem. I'll let that thing sit. Unless I need cash. But I'm pretty good on cash. I still need to buy some stuff. What should I buy? What should you buy? Yeah. Do you own any oil? No. No, I don't. You should. Still? Yeah. That's not stopping. All right. As long as she ain't stopping, I'm not stopping. <laughs> Who knows that song? I don't know that song. It's a magic stick. Oh, really? Yeah. 50 cent? Yeah. Huh. Oh, I do remember that part. Okay. <laughs> um, next time you got to do it in the 50 cent voice. <laughs> yeah. It helps me. It like, helps me. Like the uh, the Tracy Morgan voice. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Denzel. I uh, know, but it's all Tracy. right, all right, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll have you play basketball at Pelican Bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! All I can think of now is like you should do the impressions of him on the uh, what are the, uh, are the is that Rocket Mortgage commercials? Yeah, Tracy Morgan. Yeah. 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 Are you sure? Because <laughs> I don't think you're sure. <laughs> Fat man, no tiene aceite. I do not, not yet. All right, that is Tracy Morgan. That's yeah, I know. I know. I'm trying. I'm working on. I did YouTube <laughs> how to do Denzel. I haven't gotten it yet. I need to practice a little bit more. I will get Denzel. <laughs> I promise you. All right, all right. Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yes, Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Um, Jeff Panika said, "Buy XOM." Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who was on Ooh, oil before yes. everybody else was on oil. Yeah, the queen of and stock you were picking. a hater on it. At the time, yeah. And that's, with good reason, because after that, that's when oil went negative. <laughs> at the time. No, no, no. You were already... No, no, no. It was already beat. It was no, already no. beat. The actual futures of oil went negative in July. She's had it longer than that. She might have, yeah. Yeah. She it was, was already beat down, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mini zoom. Nailed that. Yeah, that was her first pick she ever made on her own. Mini zoom. What? 
You don't remember what her average is? I'm about to pull it up right now. But I got to believe she's got to be 50% up on it, maybe? Like, once a week. Guys, let us know in the comments. Once a week or once a month, we just need to have Mini Zoom pick a stock. <laughs> she's up 50%. <laughs> yeah, Mini Zoom is up 50% on Exxon. She failed on Lulu, though. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Hey. But she picked that at highs. Yeah, well, she's got time. But the overall, good thing about mini zoom is she's got lots of time on her hands. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's looking good. I mean, she's yeah, 250 250% up on Tesla. She's still up on Baba somehow. Yeah. Last thing I'll say on AMC. I see Big Felix asking and I see a couple of other people rolling in here says I am up $6800. Is it time to sell? Uh we mentioned it earlier in, in here and I'll just cap it off with this and I'll say if you aren't on free shares I think that's probably the smart move is to be at least on free shares at this point. So that means whatever you put into it, if you've taken it out and everything else you have in there, you're playing with house money. I think in my opinion, that's probably the best way, the smartest way to go about doing it. So there you have it. Um, I don't know what you should do. Do whatever's in your heart. It got you to 6,800. <laughs> Once you're on free shares, you could do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Because it could sell, it could go all the way to a dollar and still make it. We said this before and we'll say it again. I personally would feel the same way. I'd take some off the table, but I would not want to be fully out of AMC. Even now, I wouldn't want to no, be fully yeah. out of AMC. Right. Um, but risk tolerance, the volatility, it's its going to be volatile. Yeah. You know, we'll see what happens. But good. So far, so good. Let us know when you close out how that how you ended up in. That's all I got. Guys, that's going to do it for us. Again, if you guys want to check out the Chaos Crew, get our daily watch lists, get access to my portfolio, trade alerts, our Discord group, all kinds of stuff, starting at $4.99 a month. Uh, go check out the join button next to subscribe. Love to have you guys a part of the crew. I mean, for a cup of coffee a month. Pays for itself. Yeah, and if you just want the Zoom snack of the day, which I release every morning, then you could just subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you can see my pretty face in the mornings do that too that's gonna do it for us guys we'll see you tomorrow at 3 30 p.m eastern time same time same place bye peace